in this video. I'm gonna be showing you how you can use masks in Luminar 3 to make post-processing edits only exactly where you want them and create powerful landscape photographs. Coming up. Hey, what's up guys and welcome into the channel where I post weekly videos on how you can improve your landscape photography with in-field and post-processing tutorials as well as gear reviews. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Now in this video specifically, we're diving in to the layer masks category. And now it's okay if you're kind of weary about diving into masks because they can be kind of this overwhelming thing in landscape photography post-processing, but I'm gonna show you a way to do it really easily. Now, I know there's ways to do it in Photoshop and people think that like uh, Photoshop is the only way that you can do your layer mask. Well, did you also know you can do layer masking in Luminar 3? I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that in a really fast and simple process, what it's gonna do to your landscape photography in Luminar 3. By the way, if you're interested in Luminar 3, there's a link below in the video description for you to click on and investigate to see if this is the right software for you. It's the one I use. I like it for landscape photography and you can use this tutorial to start your process of learning on the right foot. So I'm gonna show you how you can start using masks in your post-processing using Luminar 3 to start crushing your landscape photography post-processing. So let's jump right into the computer screen right now so we can see exactly how to do this and what it does to our images. All right guys, this is the photograph that we're gonna be using to look at layer masks. Now this is a shot I got in Tennessee in fall when I was shooting through some Japanese maple leaves and you had this kind of like natural window that you could shoot through and get one of those really small, like natural design, small intimate landscape type shots, like the really artsy ones that you see a lot of people post. It was a cool shot, a cool moment. So we're gonna be using this image. Now we're not really focusing too much on uh, how, what effects you put into this, we're looking at mass. So I'm just gonna apply a simple preset here. I'm just gonna do the all landscape enhancer and that's just gonna help you bring this up. And there are a lot of different presets or looks as Luminar calls them to look through and find the right one for you. I just thought like this was an overall landscape effect that we could use and adjust so we could move on to layer mass. So it looks pretty good right now. What we're gonna do is stack an adjustment layer on top of this. We use adjustment layers in landscape photography and stacking layers on top of each other so that we can adjust specific changes that we make. We make changes in this layer and we keep them the same because we have them perfect. We add a new layer on top to simplify and really narrow in our edits in one specific topic. So that's kind of how layering works for landscape photography post-processing. So what I'm gonna do in this new layer is I'm gonna go to add filter and since this is kind of like a dreamy landscape photo, what I'm gonna do is apply the Orton effect. Now, if you wanna learn more about the Orton effect, I did a video on that a few weeks ago. You can look in the card right here or in the video description below on how you can achieve the Orton effect and how it affects your images and what it does to each specific landscape photograph and how you can use it for your landscape photography to improve. But what I'm gonna do for this is just click on the Orton effect. It's gonna pop up, I have multiple options. I'm gonna increase this pretty significantly to make it like really dreamy and hazy. Like I kind of wanted it, getting that bokeh effect up here in the top corners and the bottom corners of the foreground, shooting right through to this. Now you may be thinking, well this is like the entire image. You've just made everything blurry and fuzzy and I spent thousands of dollars buying camera equipment to be sure that my images are tack sharp. Well, this is the point of a mask. This is why we use masking to single out parts of the photo and occlude other parts of the photo. So what I'm going to do, and this is how you use masking in Luminar, is a filter mask. What you're gonna do is hover over this bar on your effect and a little paintbrush comes up right here, this little guy, and you're gonna click him and you have options that come up. You have brush, radial mask, gradient mask, and luminosity masking. Now again, I did another video on luminosity masking that you can use. You can watch that here or in the video description below. But on with this because this is why you click this video. So what I'm gonna do is select this brush. 
So this brush is gonna pull up multiple options for me. I have paint, erase, I have the brush size, the softness, always keep this softness up pretty high for landscape photography because we're trying to blend these effects in, especially with masking. We're trying to blend this effect in, make it unnoticeable like we actually shot it in the image. We're just making small adjustments to this. Opacity, I keep on about 50. These are minor changes that we don't want to be noticeable within our image, so 50 is pretty good on this. And then our size, depending on what we wanna do, we can slide that up and down it's edit to edit on how big you want that size to be. So what I'm doing with this is painting in the areas that I want the Orton effect to exist in, those areas of blurred out parts that I want to stay. That's gonna be the foreground areas and not this middle section. So what I'm gonna do is just start painting and you'll see that our image has instantly changed. So I'm just gonna keep painting. Don't worry about the change right now. We'll get into that in just a second. So I'm just gonna keep painting, keep painting, keep painting. And if you haven't noticed already, we have a change in our side panel on the right hand side. So what happened here? Well, I have a layer mask or a filter mask as Luminar likes to call it. And what has happened here is you have a representation of what we've painted in and what we've done to this image. Always remember, white means that the effect that you have chosen is showing up. Black means that it is void of that effect. So a better way to think about it is light is revealing what you've done and the black is kind of like hiding that or concealing it in the shadows. So always remember shadowy parts are the hidden part of that effect. So I can easily just continue painting this in and we can change how much that mask looks and how much this image looks too. And I can even stack more filters on top of that if I want to do another layer adjustment. And let's say I want to add a filter here and I want to go to like a saturation and vibrance so I can increase saturation and vibrance in that middle section. What I can do is just barely increase that, barely increase the vibrance, and then let's do another mask. So I'm gonna click brush again, and I'm just gonna paint this part in to the middle of this image so that we have like this little highlighted, vibrant, saturated area of this image showing up. So this is what a layer mask does. It allows us to paint in parts that we want and it allows us to seclude parts that we don't want. We're hiding and revealing in the same edit and making those edits show up in the parts of the image that we want. This gives us more control as landscape photographers and helps us to create more local adjustments instead of global adjustments. So what I can do is toggle these off and on. So here's the adjustment we just made turned off and here's the first filter mask that we made turned off and then I can turn the first one back on and turn the second one back on and you can see the adjustments that it made. Subtle adjustments that help us with our images and then I can do the before and after effect that we did. I can just turn the before and after look on and this is how much power we have to make the edits that we wanna make and adjust the edits that we want to adjust and really create professional looking landscape photographs. Hey guys, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want more post-processing videos that are gonna help you improve your landscape photography and take that post-processing to another level so you can start crushing your landscape photographs. Continuing watching is always an option too. You can watch this playlist on post-processing techniques to use in Luminar 3. And you can also watch this video from this channel on how you can improve your landscape photography in other ways. Thanks so much guys and I'll see you next time.